Mascot horror is a genre of horror that has emerged in recent years and has gained a significant following. It is a unique type of horror that takes familiar, usually harmless, and friendly mascots and turns them into something terrifying and gruesome. Mascot horror often uses humor and satire to enhance the experience. This creates a sense of irony and dark humor which can be cathartic for audiences. It also serves as a commentary on our culture's tendency to use mascots as a form of marketing and branding, and how this can be used to mask deeper societal issues. The origins of this genre can be traced back to horror movies and TV shows from the 1980s and 1990s such as the film Killer Clowns from Outer Space and the TV show Tales from the Crypt. Since then, the genre has grown in popularity and nowadays is usually found in video games. Mascot horror often explores the concept of something that is meant to bring joy and happiness, turning into something sinister and evil. The preservation of childhood innocence is also a very common theme in mascot horror. Characters that resemble characters in our world turning into terrifying creatures that prey on our fears and anxieties. This can invoke a sense of nostalgia for a lost childhood while also subverting the innocence and purity associated with that time. In recent years, mascot horror has definitely gained popularity starting with the creation of Five Nights at Freddy's. It's an interesting genre and it seems to get larger as the days go on and it doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon. I'm just fucking with you, mascot horror is awful. Amanda the Adventurer is an indie horror game released on April 6, 2022 for the Dread XP Found Footage Game Jam hosted on itch.io, the mother gum of indie games. Adventures with Anxiety, Friday Night Funkin', We Become What We Behold, George Likes Lasagna, I guess? It won second place in the Found Footage Game Jam, ending up behind 2000 Nevitz and Lame, but above Blood Club. So you would think something that got second place would at least be fun, right? You would be wrong. And look! There are apples. Can you see apples? Good job! Now we can make apple pie. Throughout the entirety of Amanda the Adventurer, all you do is watch videos, and occasionally you are asked a question or asked to click on something specific. If you don't do what it asks you to do, something vaguely scary happens. Ooh, I click on store, store disappear. Ooh, I say fuck you instead of apple, it makes me type apple, ooh, scary. The gameplay is non-existent, it's a nothing burger. It's like if someone took Pokemon Channel and tried to make a horror game with it, it isn't fun. The ending too, holy shit is it bad. Amanda goes to your real life house, starts spazzing out, and then a shitty JPEG of a weird gray thing covers the screen, the end. There's some lore here and there, but the main gameplay doesn't have enough going on for it to be interesting. If your game isn't fun, don't bother trying to put lore in. The entirety of Amanda the Adventurer feels like it was specifically made for YouTubers to play it. And it worked! People milked the shit out of it! Every time a new update came out, time to drag old Betsy out of the barn. When it came out, I wanted to like it. The models have that nice low budget feel to them, the voice acting is good and it makes it feel like a real local broadcast children's show, but the gameplay is just awful, man. I don't blame the creators for playing it, it had an interesting premise, but it did fuck all with it. I probably wouldn't have made this video in the first place if this was the only thing Amanda the Adventurer had to go for it, but I have been misleading you. This game isn't called Amanda the Adventurer, it's really called Amanda the Adventurer Pilot Episode. The game was released a few weeks ago. Okay, so honestly, I'm not sure where to take this video next. There's so much I want to talk about, but in what order? Do I talk about my experience as it happened? Do I talk about how the art direction has improved drastically? Do I talk about how the game became an escape room? Well, for starters, Amanda the Adventurer is now a 3D experience where you use information in the tapes to interact with your environment, instead of being confined to just the tapes. This was also the case in the last version of Pilot Episode, but that was more or less a playable teaser for this game. Think PT with Silent Hills. It definitely adds more to the experience to actually have the player look around their surroundings. I shit you not, I had a piece of paper next to me I was using to write notes down. Most puzzle games I've played have either been extremely easy or convoluted to the point you need a guide to even play it. Amanda arrives that fine line but never goes over to either side. The first time you play, you'll probably follow what's right in front of you, ending with you meeting a gruesome end. But this is only one of the endings. You use a code you get from your first playthrough to open a safe, which nets you a pause button for the TV. 
pause button lets you, well, pause the tape you're watching. You use this to either go down a different path or stop the tape at certain points to complete puzzles like putting a code in a weird-ass robot calculator thing or stopping on EAS alarms to continue the game. The voice acting is way better than the demo, the characters feel more alive, and the performance Amanda's voice actor does is amazing. Nothing you do seems grandiose or out of this world, Amanda the Adventurer is contained in its own world. There's world building, there's live action shit, fucking Chips Tips is there. Chips Tips, if you don't know, is this Blue's Clues style point and click FMV game and is beautiful. Genuinely, if you have $2 to spare, buy this game, it's worth it. There's so much effort put into it. I didn't know Chip was a thing until I saw it and demanded the adventurer. It's a classic case of an indie game dev helping another indie game dev. Again, I cannot express this enough, Chips Tips is great. Amanda has its problems, but it's still a pretty fun game. It's definitely better than the demo. But for some people, this isn't the case. <laughs> I tricked you! We're going to use all three! <laughs> the patient is getting rowdy! I'll need a little help here. Help me! Please! Now, who are you going to help? You're not going to help me? Fine! I can do this by myself. No way! People seem to want to lump Amanda in with Mascot Horror, with the likes of Poppy Playtime or Guards in a Ban Ban. What they seem to not realize is that Amanda isn't trying to be scary. Mascot Horror games usually have jump scares or loud noises to try and spook little kids. It's what unifies them under the term Mascot Horror. Besides the end, Amanda the Adventurer does not have jump scares. Even the tapes themselves focus more on the puzzle solving and comedy rather than scares. It's a puzzle game with horror elements, not a horror game with puzzle elements. It's trying to tell a story with tension and world building, it's not supposed to be scary. If you don't like it, that's fine, but you don't need to attack those who do like it. Just because you are a miserable bastard doesn't mean you have to make everyone else one. Let people live. All this from a tweet. Get a fucking life. Amanda the Adventurer is a game that people don't seem to understand. By that I mean people keep trying to put it in categories it isn't in. It's not mascot horror, it's not a horror game. There's horror elements, but at its core, it's a puzzle solving venture with a unique style of gameplay. Personally, I wish I gave Amanda the benefit of the doubt when it was originally made, but at the same time, the demo was barely a game. I'm glad it improved, and I can't wait to see where it goes next. If it goes anywhere at all. Thank <laughs> you.